Let's take a look at an interesting mosquito repelling device from AliExpress. I have to say we don't really have a problem with mosquitoes here. Midges, yes, but not generally indoors. However, it's interesting to look at the technology. So these are devices that are designed to vaporise, not the piece of foam to actually make it sort of stronger in packaging. Uh, these are devices that are designed to vaporise a mixture of an oil carrier with a very small quantity of, in this case, um, it is cypermethrin, which is a synthetic pyrethrin, which is derived from chrysanthemum plants originally, but is now chemically synthesised. What else do we have in here? Foam. More foam. The instructions. A USB cable, because that's what powers this, and uh, a set of foam feet. I could have stuck them on, but it's good I didn't because it looks like that might be how it's held together. So if I plug this into a USB supply, it has multiple modes. First of all, if you double click it, these lights light. That is nice. It not only means it doubles up as an ornamental light, but it means you can actually see the level of liquid. Well, let me stick this in. I shall put the liquid in. So the liquid is this uh, oil carrier with um, a very small percentage of that pyrethrin in it. And when you put it in here, there is a heater in here. And we'll take a look at the heater. And when you select the mode, it can just be lighting or it can actually be the heating mode. If you long press this, it comes on at a three hour option, very dim LEDs. Press it again, it goes up to six hour timer. Press it again, it goes up to nine hour. Press it again and they all light. Maybe that just means continuous all the time. And you can see, if, if you watch the brightness of this, when I turn this off by long pressing it, you'll see the brightness suddenly increases because it's turned off the heater and there's a certain voltage drop across the USB lead. So these things only contain a very small quantity of the pyrethrins. And the reason for that is because it only takes a tiny quantity in the air to... It's not aiming to kill the insects. It's aiming to trigger something in them that stops them biting the mosquitoes. It kind of act, it gives them a warning signal and they just basically, they may still be flying around, but they won't bite. Let's see how this comes apart now. Have I got a screwdriver to fit up there? I should have a screwdriver to fit up there. I'm just grabbing some screwdrivers. I don't think my usual one will fit up there because it's, it looks quite deep. Hold on, I'm just going to stick something in there. and Oh yeah, it's quite deep. Mmm, annoying. Give me a second. Is this going to fit? No. I'll tell you what, we can make it fit by making this even more VDE non-compliant. I'll just use that. I could just go and get a more suitable screwdriver, but this is what happens to VDE screwdrivers when you're kind of like caught out and you just need a bit more reach. They don't really think this through too much. Now the safety guys can have a have a go at me about that. Oh, I've definitely got a purchase on the screw. So originally pyrethrins were discovered with the characteristic of one of the chrysanthemum plants, one that looks like a big daisy, because they found that it had that effect on insects, and they used to originally get the plants and collect the flowers, dry them, and then just grind them up into a powder that was then uh, formed into a sort of resin that could either be distributed over other plants as a water-based emulsion or uh, infused in oil for applications like this or sprayed into the air. And if you put a lot of it into the air, not, oh, it's all plugs, that's nice. Let's make sure I get them in the right order, right there. The one with double red, I'm guessing that's heater maybe, is, oh, the whole circuit board just slid out. That might not be a bad thing. Or it might be a bad thing because this front plate is actually stopping that from coming out. Let's see if that front plate can be popped out. There was a crunching noise, and it is popping out. I don't know if it was supposed to come out in that way, but that's how it has just come out. No, there might be other bits. Oh, there are other clips. Right, I shall just unplug that then. No, it's not unplugging. Anyway, what about this now? I don't think this top's screwed on. I don't think there's a screw hidden up here, is there? I don't see anything, although it is very swamped out with that light from the studio lights. No, that is a, a crevice, right? Tell you what, I'm just going to get the spudger into it. 
Anyway, having moved on from the plants with the natural extracts, etc., they then went on to find out which chemicals did it and make uh, new improved insecticides based on mass producible chemicals. Sorry if there's loud clicking noises. Oh, that is it coming out now. Without breaking it, that's nice. And there's lots of different uh, pyrethrins. Okay, so here's the little circuit board for the LEDs. No resistor, it's just the LEDs in parallel. This also said something about being rechargeable, it's not. But they sometimes say rechargeable when they just mean you can use it at the power bank. So, interestingly, they've got this ceramic heater here. And they've got a metal rivet that they've put through that. Let's get these out. And that metal rivet has been flared out, an eyelet, should I say, has been flared out on both sides to hold it in place in this heat-resistant plastic. And the when it's in use, the wick of the oil actually passes through that. And uh, it just basically, as it heats up, it vaporises the oil off in very small quantities. This stuff is toxic if you ingest it, and it's definitely not great for... Um, the marine environment and, well, it affects fish and it affects, in affects insects. Um, it's not, it's poisonous if you were to drink it or let pets lick the things. So it's one of these things, just make sure the bottles don't get left open, which is unlikely. And they're kind of all closed up in here. But there are instances where kids have um, unscrewed these and then tried to drink the contents. And there is a rather odd case where a guy died when uh, the family cooked a meal in insecticide because they picked up the wrong bottle of oil, poured it in, cooked the meal in it, and the rest of the family survived but were ill, but he unfortunately died as a result of that. So the two red wires are the heater. Let's see if I can just pop this off now. It's an interesting subject, the pyrethrins, and it is very small quantities. I have checked if other brands fit in here. That's that off now. So I can slide the circuit board out now to reveal a little 8-pin chip now. Going by the number of LEDs, and this LED light at the same time as the other lights light, what's the bet it's just using the six pins of the chip as the heater drive pin, which will be via transistor? Oh, lots of other chip positions in this. What's that about? Does this have the facility to be rechargeable as well? If, a, if another connector is added, like, say, this connector here, we can uh, explore that. We can reverse engineer that aspect of it. But there's another transistor used to switch the lights, and that could also be used to switch an LED. There's a power LED that just lights. I notice there's another LED there, which is probably the charging circuitry LED. And then the other three LEDs will just possibly have their own drive pin. Um, right, tell you what, we'll take a look at that. Uh, so I shall reverse engineer the circuit board and we can explore that. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. Now, it's worth mentioning that this unit has the space in here and a little dimple thing for holding potentially two 18650 cells. It would have to be two because I don't really see the point of the rechargeable circuitry in here because ultimately... The batteries aren't going to last that long. These ones are fairly decent capacity, but it would still last barely a night. It's maybe just if we're out in your veranda or something like that. Anyway, let's explore. On one side of the circuit board is just connectors. We've got the power connector from the USB, and it's worth mentioning the USB does not have the programming resistors, even though it's USB-C, which means that if you plug it into smart chargers, they won't try and power it at all. But you'll know that because it won't light up. But we've got one connector here for the unused lithium cell, or battery, effectively, because there's two in parallel. Uh, LEDs, 240 milliamps, which is just much more than I was expecting for that little LED circuit board. Where is that? No, I've put it through another room. No, I've got it here, in fact. It's this little circuit board here. Um, and that is really pushing those LEDs quite hard. I feel that you could do a little modification, and it would uh, cut that down. Then the heater itself has an initial resistance of about 10 ohms, but it has a slight NTC effect. The resistance drops as it heats up. So it ends up uh, on a 5 volt supply, even with the drop across this diode, about, say, 2.5 watts. Okay, right, tell you what, I'll get this out of the way. And we'll concentrate on the main circuit board. 
I shall zoom in just a little bit. We have the Ubiquitous 8-pin microcontroller, which they've done fancy things with the LEDs. We have the position for a TP4056, and they've gone the full thing with this. They've got the 0.4 ohm resistor recommend in the data sheet from the USB supply and uh, decoupling capacitors everywhere. They've really gone to town with that. And there's the program resistor position, which could be 2.2K for 500 milliamps or 1.2K, probably it would be 1.2K, for one amp to charge those cells up at a modest rate. And it normally has control of these two LEDs. But because the LEDs are not, they have a resistor here for them, 2K. But because they're not being controlled by this chip, because it's not there, to use that as a power LED, they've simply got a zero ohm link here, which just makes the green LED light up whenever it's powered. Both the USB power supply and the lithium cell, if present, go via these diodes. This one's in place because it is for the uh, USB power supply. They've also got a dual diode package positioned for those two diodes. But in this case, because they're not using the lithium cell, they've left that diode off, but this one is still in place. There is an A2SHB MOSFET for switching the heater. There is a Y1 NPN transistor for switching the LEDs via that unusually low 5.6 ohm resistor. And the four LEDs here uh, have three drive lines, and I'll show you that in the schematic. Um, other than that, the only decoupling capacitor actually in use in this unit is the one for the microcontrol itself down here. Let's take a look at the schematic, and then I'll show you a medley of chemicals and, and how they fit into that, because there's one that doesn't fit very well, and to be honest, it's not really surprising. Think corporate entities. So I shall zoom down a bit. Think S.C. Johnson. So here's the USB supply, and it is just straight two connections from the uh, USB-C. So as I say, it won't necessarily work with a smart charger that doesn't see the resistors and therefore doesn't think it's connected to a valid load. So it will uh, not put the output out in some instances. But if you connect it to a dumb charge port, and to be fair, it is supplied with a USB-A to C lead as standard um, so that kind of is their way around that then there's that Schottky diode which would, is used because the lithium cell would also be feeding onto that via a Schottky diode um, then we get the positive rail with that drop across that there is a fairly high current being drawn so the drop is potentially going to be half a volt or more we've got the three high power LEDs over here with their 5.6 ohm resistor and their uh, NPN transistor which is switching a lot of current. I did measure that at, um, I measured it at, where is that note I made? 240 milliamps, which is ludicrous. And there's the heater resistor, which I've drawn like an old fashioned zigzaggy resistor with its A2SHB MOSFET with pull down resistor and then a 10 ohm gate resistor. There's the button. And here are the four LEDs wired as two pairs. So this connection is the common and it can change polarity. And depending on which one of these is high or low, you can actually um, apply the opposite polarity on this via the resistor. So that does mean the LEDs are being scanned all the time. I think part of the reason for that is that they do have the other functionality with these LEDs that you can long press it to turn it on, but as you click through, it goes three hour, six hour, nine hour, and then it shows the rough battery status as well. A gimmick in a way, but it's really kind of needed, I suppose. Um, other than that, there's nothing major, right? Tell you what, let's zoom back out. And we shall bring in the bottles of different chemicals. I mean, some of these are palethrin, pralethrin, should I say. Uh, some of them are cypermethrin. The one that came with it is cypermethrin. They'd said cy cymethrin or something like that in the listing. But the there is a little uh, QR code in this, and it shows it takes it links to the manufacturer website. It's a perfume maker that also just happens to manufacture these. Uh, this one, lavender power. Oh, is it lavender? Hold on, I'm going to sniff it. Oh yes, it's floral. Yes, uh, so floral as well as uh, the other. This is transfluthrin, I think, because this one is the good night spelt with a K. This is the Indian one. Um, so let's try. This is this uh, the all-out ultra um, 
power fan refill. That was the one that had the fan in it. That's right. Um, and this one is uh, SC Johnson. Now, let me bring in this and show you that, as well as the little heater sat on top here, we've got a little insert screwed down that has the thread and also the alignment. I don't know if you're going to see that little alignment fins that just keep the heater centered so it doesn't actually rub against the side of the metal. It's nice that they put the metal um, grommet through there, the eyelet, uh, just to keep the oil from soaking into the ceramic. I think that could give issues. But anyway, the original one, which is this one, and you can buy these from AliExpress or Pound. Goodness knows where you're getting. I'm pretty sure it is oil, because I've tested it. It's flammable. Burns nicely. And it does claim to have that uh, that um, cypermethrin in it. But when screwed in, this one sticks above the heater by a, a few millimetres, eighth of an inch. So it is, you know, well within the sort of hot zone, so to speak. If we get this other one, I haven't... Oh, I'm, oh no, I don't know where that one came from. It's also Chinese tech, so it is the same. Slightly colour, different colour of wick. And this one, when screwed in, sticks up a wee bit higher. Okay. The Indian one, the other ones, I'll save you the horror of me trying one, everyone in individually, but the... This is one of the Indian ones, a good night, and it feels like a different thread, but it does screw in, kind of, kicks over to the side a bit, but does come to the same height. I wouldn't say the Indian ones are really compatible. They, they just seem to have a different thread on them. And then the SC Johnson one. These things... I mentioned this earlier probably, they're safe in the low volumes, they go into the air. The biggest worry is the amount of uh, kerosene being vaporised. But then again, if you've ever painted, well, painters on a daily basis have paint fumes much higher level than this. Uh, but the actual pyrethrins are at such low level that it poses no problem. However, don't let kids or pets suck or lick in these bottles. Uh, so this is the SC Johnson one. It does kind of fit in, but it's only heating the very tip, if you will. It's uh, about three millimetres below the top, eighth of an inch below the top. So this is the only one that isn't compatible. What a surprise that the big corporate entity has made an incompatible product with just about everything else on the industry. Mosquito go duo and this one just says liquid refill for jungle formula. That's the jungle formula one sold in the UK. And I'm sure that one is the pralithrin one. Lots of different... Uh, versions of the um, pyrethrins. But there is one modification you can do. If you unclip this lid off the top to expose the LED circuit board, it's entirely up to you if you had one of these and you wanted to make the LEDs last longer or be less bright. You could desold one of the wires or just put it in line. You could put a 27 ohm resistor in line and it will cut the current consumption down to about 15 milliamps per LED instead of 80 milliamps like it is at the moment. But that is it. A uh, very odd device, very neat, I guess, in countries that need mosquito repellents because uh, they, you know, very high temperature climates, probably lots of humidity in mosquitoes. They'll probably appreciate these. Um, not so useful here, but uh, but still novel to look at. They, they'll probably appreciate the, the extra technology in these. But there we have it. Uh, the fairly neat insect deterrent it doesn't kill them it just basically puts them out of biting mode just by affecting their nervous system and it's they're, it's triggered by the fact they can sense that there is something that they're not happy with um but the ones that they spray a lot more into the air like the aerosol cans of fly killer they put out a lot more of this into the air and uh, they do literally just stop the nervous system of the insects working and that's why they just drop out the sky so to speak because uh they Insects work purely on a nervous system. It's mainly just a, a reflex action they have. But very interesting. Well worth taking apart.